Well, hello and welcome. I'm Megha Sharma, and I'm here today to make an important announcement to all of you who are watching NewsX. We at NewsX have come up with a unique show series, Waku, the Diaspora Broadcasting Network, and you are watching the brand new launch of the first episode of the Diaspora Broadcasting Network on our very channel, a dedicated community-based ecosystem to connect India's brilliant and change-making diaspora with the larger audience over here in India. Now, next week onwards, we would be coming up with special bi-weekly telecasts on Wednesdays and Saturdays prime time, showcasing the bright voices of the persons of Indian origin and their successful groundwork, groundbreaking work that they have been doing overseas. And we will in fact be conducting interviews, doing award shows, hall of fames, uh, they are going, they're going to be listicles, top 100 Waku diaspora out there, podcasts, hangouts and much, much more. Waku, in fact, is an apolitical, not-for-profit model to build a truly rich and vibrant community using our broadcast channels as a platform for our 40 million strong diaspora community. And as we commence this adventurous journey, we seek your blessings, we seek your support and we seek your backing. And here's a glimpse into Waku the Diaspora Broadcasting Network. For the first time in the history of Indian television, a dedicated platform to showcase the feats and the accomplishments of the Indian Diaspora, where we invite the persons of Indian origin to share their stories of successes and accomplishments to the larger audience over here in India. And that's why we are going ahead and building a global connectivity network. And we welcome you to the Waku Diaspora Broadcasting Network. So come, be a part of this ever-growing Indian community across the world. Follow Waku DBN on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Ku, and Clubhouse. Become Waku patrons on memboru.com slash Waku. My audiences once again living in India and abroad to Waku, the Diaspora Broadcasting Network. You know, the initiative to go ahead and build this entire community and reach out to the Indian diaspora is first of all to recognize their feats, their successes. And this has been the first ever initiative that any Indian television has gone ahead and done in history. Let's uh, bring in our guest. Joining me on the broadcast is Sri Aya. Uh, from America, uh, a, a very eminent personality from the Indian diaspora, and it's good to have you, sir, on the broadcast with us. First things first, Thank you. Thank you. Nice this is massive opportunity at this point of time to showcase the Indian diaspora. Never has it been done before, and while there have been several of these networks, these fora, these communities, the help of a broadcast network, a broadcast platform to showcase the successes, the works of the diaspora is going to be truly magnificent. Uh, was that uh, for me? Yes, absolutely. Uh, Shri Ayu. Yes, yes it, it's always a pleasure to be on your channel. NewsX gives uh, the speakers the space and the time to express their thoughts, which I don't find in many other channels. Uh, kudos to you. And I really, really like this new initiative uh, because India now is probably one of the biggest uh, uh, you know, uh, number of people in terms of number of people who are outside of India, each one of us are actually ambassadors of India. We are trying to bring forth the richness of our culture and heritage and it's, it's a pleasure to be on your channel. Thank you very much. You know, uh, Ambassador Deepak also joins me on the broadcast and Ambassador, they have been, uh, you know, in the very recent past, the uh, occasions that I have witnessed where our Indian diaspora the Indian community that has been living abroad but helping out India in every step of the day, the day, especially when it comes to the pandemic wave second, where you know we had ventilators that had been pouring in, oxygen cylinders, there were funds that had come out, donations that had come out in large numbers. Uh, and this is a salute to our Indian diaspora. This is the persons of Indian origin uh, that are sending us remittances to a large extent. And on that, on and and on, on, on top of it, also bringing a good name for our country abroad. And keeping in mind, like Sri Ayer said, the strategic developments are such that the focus at this point of time, the highlight at this point of time, is India. Thank you very much. Always a pleasure to be with you, Ms. Sharma, to be on your channel. As uh, Mr. Ayer said, that it is about the best because you believe, NewsX believes in news, not in noise. 
You know, there are some 272 million international migrants in the world, and we, Indians, make up just over 6% per the United Nations data. You were absolutely right when you said that we reached out to them in our moment of difficulty with the Chinese virus. Our 35, 40 million sons and daughters of India, doesn't matter where they live, look at the kind of support they gave us. They are successful wherever they've gone. Doctors, dentists, lawyers, bankers, small business owners, people like Mr. Iyer, people like Ambassador Kapoor, IT experts, strivers, dreamers, with outsized achievements and prominence in whichever countries they've gone to. And ma'am, I'm old enough to remember 1962 when my family was bereaved, 1965 again in 1971 when we lost somebody, and in 1999, overseas Indians contributed generously to the national defense. Now that your channel is reaching out to provide a platform, it could not have come at a better time. I remind my colleagues and the millions of people watching this that we had floated the resurgent India bonds in August 1998, following our May 1998 nuclear test when we faced Western sanctions, the State Bank of India did this, and whatever we had hoped to collect from the Indian diaspora, we got twice that amount, which reminds me, ma'am, of what we've always said, it's a question of tan, man, and tan. The tan may be anywhere in the world, the tan could be anywhere, but the man is in India. Absolutely. We salute the Indian diaspora. Absolutely. We have two children, my wife and I, we've donated them both to the United States of America, Mr. Ayer, Ambassador Pradeep Kapoor. Uh, Mr. Jali, also a pleasure to see you again, and Ms. Opatya. So we really do believe that the diaspora has a significant role to play in India's development. Uh, they may be out of our sight, they are never out of our minds and our hearts. Well done. And absolutely. We salute you. That, that's that's exactly that's exactly why you know they are out of sight but they are definitely not out of our hearts and they just must be like you know uh, far and few in number the big wigs that have made a huge name for themselves I'm talking about the Lakshmi, Lakshmi Mittals of the world I'm talking about Sundar Pichai Indira Nui you know these are num these are people that we can count on our fingertips but what about the others who are doing fantastic work be it in the IT sector be it in the engineering sector be it in the medical fraternity liberal arts you know you name a community you name a particular arena and Indians are out there aerospace artificial intelligence uh, those are the areas where we find our expertise in and Dr. Joseph Chalil uh, it's good to have you on the broadcast with us IASPC chairman and, and and the idea behind actually having a formal organized forum that will uh, raise the issues concerns uh, the good work that the diaspora has been doing uh, recognize them feed them uh, uh, and, and, and and you know award them and reward them so that the people in our country also get to know about the kind of work they are doing there should be a networking and a connectivity effort and then bring this to a larger goal of creating a worldwide forum with perhaps holding chapters in every single city of the world to bring about this all conclusive diaspora that we are trying to build a network of at this point of time. Thank you, uh, thank you for having me and uh, congratulations to NewSex for this, this great uh, achievement um, to make this happen. Um, as you know, as Ambassador uh, Deepak Wara just mentioned, uh, you know, the diaspora, the Indian diaspora in the USA, where I'm speaking from, um, is pretty powerful, you know, compared to every other ethnic groups or immigrants in the US, um, especially the, the, we have over one lakh Indian doctors in the USA who are all in major leadership positions who are on the forefront of the COVID fight in the USA when it happened. Mm -hmm. We have several IITians um, who were graduates from India who are leading major American companies and Fortune 500 companies um, in here. We have, um, you know, Indians now come into American politics. We have, you know, even to a vice presidential level um, of the U.S. So, you know, or where we look into other countries, whether in Australia or New Zealand or, 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 or Britain, where we see Indian diaspora leading the way, you know, even islands in, in, in South of uh, America, where you'd see, you know, majority of the of the leadership in governments are of Indian origin or, you know, from previous generations. So, you know, we always hear this, you know, old saying in India that you can always take an Indian out of India, but you cannot take India out of India. You know? So 
I, you know, no matter I've been living here for 20 odd years, you know, mm. running companies and managing newspapers, whatever it might be, but I'm still, um, you know, loyal to my homeland. And, you know, with the, with the beck and call, we'll always be there to help whatever we need. I think, I think your initiative is going to be a key um, initiative which can future promote, you know, maybe promote um, a brain gain back to India. You know, how do we, the people who have experienced like Mr. Ayer or, uh, you know, like everybody else here, you know, to, to get their to intellect, to, to help India when we need it. So thank you once again for making this great initiative. Well, Dr. Joseph, thank you for joining us on this special broadcast and sharing your views. Ambassador Pradeep also joins me on the broadcast. And Ambassador, uh, do you think at this point of time there's a, a lacuna that needs to be filled, especially in going ahead and having a, a community? Uh, an ecosystem that is going to be uh, not religion based or caste based or community based but 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 talking about Indians across the world and and and, and while there may be an indo-american community or an indo-australian community or an indo or African community or various other cities and and, 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 and provinces that you go ahead and live in uh, a Hindu community or a Muslim community or a Parsi community and etc etc uh, there needs to be an all-encompassing forum that needs to be brought about you think that, that there's a lacunae that can be filled and 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 new with news acts going ahead and having waku as an initiative could be the first step to it Yes, I think uh, first I have to congratulate uh, NewsX for this uh, very significant and important initiative. The time has come, uh, and for India, the hour has come for, you know, the diaspora, yes, in the sense that uh, we have been having the Pravasi Bharatiya Divas and, uh, you know, NewsX putting this on an official media basis for the global Indian diaspora. Uh, I think the hour has come. So congratulations to NewsX. I have worked in almost all the continents of the world except Australia. And what I see as the contributions of the Indian diaspora in all the continents is very important and very significant for those countries. Now, those countries are our karma bhumi and our Janma Bhumi is Bharat. So for all the Indian origin diaspora, they have already been contributing very significantly. For example, some mention has been made about the, you know, COVID vaccines, the coronavirus pandemic in India, how the global India diaspora responded. Uh, Dr. Chalil has also alluded to it. Uh, Ambassador Vora has alluded to it. The IIT fraternity in the US, for example, and the medical fraternity in the US got together and sent thousands and thousands of oxygen concentrators in no time. Yeah. Now, the uh, supplies for manufacturing the vaccines which were blocked by the US, I just learned yesterday from some prominent Indian leaders in the US that one of the people who had made significant contributions to the election campaign of the vice president called up the vice president and asked like what is happening and within a matter of hours the supplies were on their way to mm -hmm. India. So that is the magic of the Indian diaspora and it is only bound to increase. Now for even for India the time has come to emerge globally very as a very important player and the role of the Indian diaspora in that is going to be more and more important as the days pass by. So it's not only the Indians in India but the Indian diaspora all over the world, which will be contributing towards that. Thank you. Absolutely. You know, Kriti Upadhyay also joins me on the broadcast. And Kriti, your experience, first of all, being part of the Indian diaspora, uh, uh, how have things turned out for you especially? And in wake of the kind of uh, transformations that are taking place uh, geostrategically, do you think there is also a change in the mindset of uh, foreigners when they go ahead and look at uh, the Indian community living in their soils? Namaskar Mega Ji, firstly big congratulations to you, to Rishabh Gulati Ji and everybody else at NewsX for you know taking the onus of getting through this uh, this great initiative, Baku, which I believe means Vasudevai Kutumbukam, which is so true when it comes to the Indian diaspora and community. No matter where we go, what we do, we are one big family. And as you know, uh, my senior colleagues here already mentioned, 
uh, you know, India is one is is a rising power right now. Just look at the U.S. You know, if you look at any any ethnic group, which is you know the most educated, the most wealthy, with the highest median income, it's always the Indians, right? And India is India has come a long way, as you said. There there has been a lot of transformation in terms of the perception of India. We've come a long way from being the country of snake charmers to being the country of innovators uh, in Silicon Valley. And I think uh, it's very necessary to have a platform where you know we can coordinate our efforts. We can provide mentoring, support to those uh, who are you know within the diaspora community or thinking of coming or being a part of the diaspora community. So I think, uh, as you said, this fills up a great vacuum, mm -hmm. and I'm so happy to be here and be a part of Baku. And all my best wishes to you and the network. Thank you for having me here. Thank you. Thank you so much to all my guests. They are sitting from various parts of the world. Uh, and they are going ahead and sharing their views, uh, their congratulatory messages and the best wishes for going ahead and taking Waku the next step. All right. Uh, you know, I, I like to give you a glimpse of some of the top voices uh, of our Indian diaspora that we have gone ahead and put via our platform Waku. Uh, they have been spread across uh, various continents and have been doing some brilliant work right from politicians to bureaucrats uh, to entrepreneurs, uh, people related to the public policy, liberal arts, uh, fashion designers. Now here's all that's lined up later on at 8 p.m. broadcast only on NewsX. For the first time in Indian television history, India is a more powerful, more consequential country and now even more. India is this amazing country with such diversification. A dedicated platform to showcase the stories and successes of the Indian diaspora. Biden went on record talking about how Indian Americans are taking over the world. The perception of India has to get changed, not just you. We celebrate their successes and feats. Indians have done very well in almost every sector. We go ahead and recognize and award their accomplishments. We all have the responsibility uh, to show what the facts are about India. We present to you the Waku Diaspora Broadcasting Network. We come from the uh, oldest continuing civilization in the world. We have given so much to this planet. So come, be a part of the big Waku family. Follow Waku DBN on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Ku, and Clubhouse. Become Waku patrons on memboru.com slash Waku. All right, uh, so those are some of the big faces from the Indian diaspora that are going ahead and being showcased today on the mega launch of NewsX Waku, the diaspora broadcasting network. And while Ambassador Vora was uh, narrating quite an interesting incident, and, and, and please go on Ambassador because we would all like to hear it, especially keeping in mind what are the issues that we should be going ahead and picking in, in our brand new show that we are launching, launching today. One of the things which I've always found that sometimes, you know, at a time when we developed this concept of NRIs, non-resident Indians, many people said they were non-reliable Indians because they would say a lot of things and not perform. But we should not get offended because what motivates them even when they criticize us is the desire to see India even better. I've served in 13 countries and six countries as ambassador. Even the Indian diaspora and some of the African nations, they say, well, look, this is what they have done. Can't India do this? It's always goodwill. I've not come across, except in a handful of cases, any malice towards India. If there is criticism, it's very, very constructive. And the desire is there to see India realize its full potential. The other thing also about the Indian diaspora, whenever we've interacted with them, Ambassador Kapoor will bear me out on this, we've always found them very helpful and very supportive. Man, let me just tell you, we had an issue when I was your ambassador to the Sudan, Ambassador Kapoor, we had about 200 Indians who had to be uh, deported from that country. They had come in illegally. So we gave them place to stay in the Chancery building. We had some extra rooms. They stayed there. And then I reached out to the community. I said, look, they have to be fed, et cetera, and so on. And they took it upon themselves, even though we have a small diaspora in Khartoum, they rallied, they cooked the food, and they would bring it across every day to feed their compatriots over there. So that is something that I really found very, very heartwarming. These were, this is not a community that is very rich, but they reached out to their own people, to their brothers and sisters. And everywhere that I go now, 
particularly after, as Ms. Upadhyay has said, the new level of respect that India has attained. When I was in New York, all this nonsense about the virus was going on, people would actually stop me and say, India? Mm. I said, yes, India. They will thank you for giving us the medicines for the virus. That is the new image of India as an IT superpower, very humane civilization. Basically, man, you have, you have launched this platform because let the world know we Indians, we are a very good people. Absolutely. And, and, and that's exactly why, you know, these instances need to be highlighted. These actions and campaigns and causes that India and Indians go ahead and bring about to the world community. You know, there were instances of, you know, the Sikh community going ahead and helping out in every single calamity that the world has faced, be it in Australia, United States, Mexico, there was a case that had taken place. And, 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 and every time any individual of any caste, creed, culture uh, faces an issue, Sikhs come in all their grandeur and, 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 and bestow the food, the shelter and everything that is required uh, to help an individual in need. And that is the spirit of the Sikh community. That is the spirit of the Indian community, that the message that has gone out. Amb Ambassador Deepak Vara rightfully mentioned it. And, and Shri Ayar, I'll come to you. And, and you know, uh, uh, we have raised this platform and we need to utilize it in a useful fashion. How exactly uh, can be the issues causes campaigns that can be taken forth and, 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 and the kind of vision that can be had with this kind of a mega platform that we are creating for the diaspora and Indians as well. Yeah, yes, um, India, in fact, the whole world is going through some trying times right now. And countries with inimical intentions towards India and the United States are trying to sow seeds of discord trying to create some sort of a misunderstanding between the two great civilizations, uh, two great democracies. And I think as, uh, as an NRI base in the United States, I have spent half my life in India, half my life here. My Janmu Bhumi and my Karma Bhumi are like my two eyes. And it is up to me, I feel, that <clears throat> I need to make sure that such misunderstandings are taken out of the context and let people make informed decisions. You see, you've seen in the last few months how much of a, uh, a pendulum-like uh, behavior has been expressed, uh, at least from the United States. India has been pretty stable uh, in terms of how it wants to deal with. India was a member of the Quad, then it became just a mere partner. Right now, nobody knows what is Quad. Everybody is doing bilateral agreements. So, most important thing here is if you want to show strength, it has to be together. You know, how many times have we read stories from Panchatantra where the father tells the sons, you know, gives them all each a stick and then says that if you have a single stick, you can break it. But if you group them together, it's not breakable. Mm -hmm. This is the thing of, this is the uh, kind of stuff that uh, India needs to, uh, uh, you know, uh, at least the NRIs need to uh, bring to the table and, and make sure that such uh, doubts in the minds of the current dispensation in the United States are dispelled. So I think it is happening, but it take it's taking time. And, and there will be, you know, periodic things because there is a, uh, um, <clears throat> there is a, uh, uh, what I what I would call as there's a consistent effort on the basis of some to try and sow these seeds of distrust. Okay. And, and those need to be dealt with because I, as an Indian, know a lot about uh, my Janu Bhumi and wherever possible, however possible, get that thing message across that look this is what it is this is not what it is let's keep moving forward thank you absolutely the, you 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 uh, uh, you know mention some important interesting points some controversial issues also that have rigged that have been rigged up in the past as well and obviously clarifications need to be made therefore a voice a narrative uh, by the indians by the indian diaspora to put things straight to the world and the international media as well to a certain extent and before i actually uh, go on to the next segment dr joseph chalil uh, you would want to make a comment especially on this particular subject i just want to say what uh, newsx is doing especially there are you know you see the people who are currently on the panel uh, you know ambassador poor ambassador Bora, you know Kriti, uh, mr sri Ayer, you know everybody you know are, are are very well achieved in this in this diaspora but they're very well known uh, in the country but there are several who are successful um, Indian diaspora in the USA and abroad, um, who are uh, who are not known, but you know what Newsex is doing, gonna celebrate their successes, 
you know, if we can, if we can spotlight them, hopefully we can bring them together, you know, for the betterment of our country, for our motherland, and uh, thereby, you know, as, as Sri Iyer just mentioned, you know, bring all the sticks together, you know, we'll be stronger, we'll be the strongest nation in the world, and we will, we will lead the world. Absolutely. Uh, Mika, Absolutely. Yes, yes, go ahead. Go ahead, Ambassador. Uh, one, yeah, one thought for NewsX to consider, mm -hmm. uh, you know, as Ambassador of India in South America, in Chile, for example, uh, we have an uh, Indian community which is very strong, which is uh, not large in numbers, it was just a few thousand. But what uh, we saw was the prevalence of the Indian philosophy, the Indian culture, the Indian thought was so widespread that there were literally thousands and thousands of non-Indians, Chileans and Latin Americans and North Americans following the India way of uh, thinking existence through the Brahma Kumaris, through the Sai Baba followers, through the uh, American Sikhs as they are called or the Latin American Sikhs, through the Hare Krishna. So what I did as ambassador was welcome them with open arms as part of the Indian, extended Indian diaspora. And the response was so phenomenal. Mm -hmm. To have a base of, you know, supporters who are very, very strongly committed to the idea of India, for whom day and night, their thoughts, their prayers, every action of theirs is towards what they call their motherland, India, very proudly. So if NewsX also incorporates all these aspects, it will only make the efforts of the news ex, of the diaspora, of the you know government of India, and of these various organizations much stronger. And uh, we will come to these desired outcomes much faster. You're absolutely right. You know, the ethos, beliefs, the culture, uh, the enterprising attitude of the Indians of India need the message needs to go across already people are in yeah, awe. Just they, as they, an they example know. Mega. Yeah. For example, if I go to visit the you know, have a call on the president of uh, Chile mm -hmm. Suddenly some officer comes to me from the side and whispers in my ear uh, Ambassador Hare Krishna So I turn around and he's a Chilean who's working as an aide to the president and he says, in future, you do not need to go to anybody. You just let me know whatever is required to be done in Chile. Please get in touch with me directly. And the same kept on happening repeatedly with the governors, with the ministers, with the chief of protocol. Wherever I would go, there would be some Chilean who would say, I'm a follower of Sai Baba or I'm a follower of the, you know, Lord Krishna, Kumaris, yes, absolutely. Or whichever you know, that, that's, sect. that's the spread. That's 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 how big our community and that's how many followers we have, and and not just uh, from the Indian community. Like like Ambassador went ahead and gave an example of from uh, 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 from various different communities, from various different sects, from various different races, and that is yes. the magic of India. But that is also, the magic of what the Indian is community. also happening They've is been, that, yes. uh, for example, some of these people told us that their children have started following Hindu thought and they in turn have started understanding better about vegetarianism, about Hinduism and they have started appreciating a lot more than earlier. Absolutely. So you know, you that, talk about that yoga, that has become quite the fad across the world. There was a news item that not, came in just a, to... It's not, I would say it as a fad really because if I hark back to history, the you know country with the greatest amount of capacity to have influenced countries across the world was India through its soft power diplomacy. You see the whole of Southeast Asia followed the Indian thought, followed the Indian systems, traditions, customs, language, everything. Central Asia, very similar. So we brought Buddhism to them, we brought uh, Hinduism to them. We also carried as Indians to some extent, to some of these countries, Islam and Christianity, through our priests. Because if I go to the remotest parts of, you know, the furthest country in the world from India is Chile, mm -hmm. and I go to this remote village, and then the father of the church comes out, and he says, oh, I want to introduce you to my team. 
and brother Peter and brother Tom and brother, they are all Indians from Kerala or from South India. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, so that's that, so that's that's the kind of impact. I, I was also going to give an example. There are several of these nations in the developed world, uh, in Germany, in France, where Sanskrit has taken on the trend. People are so yeah. much more interested in going ahead and making their children, making their students study Sanskrit. And, and, and that has become a big trend and something that needs to, at this point of time, followed back in India as well, because one of the most oldest of the languages in the entire world is, is Sanskrit. Keeping in mind our scriptures are written in Sanskrit, keeping in mind the fact that, you know, our scientific advances, if you go ahead and read our scriptures, the Vedas, uh, the Rig Veda, the Yajur Veda, the Sam Veda and the Atharva Veda, they, they are all uh, full of uh, knowledge and only if we could uh, utilize even uh, uh, an iota of it, it would help us a, a long way in, in, in influencing the whole world, which we already are doing at this point of time. So, so, so thank you all. Uh, for joining me on this broadcast. Stay on with me. This is Waku in a nutshell. We have uh, big dreams, we have big goals and to achieve them, we need your support, our viewers, your blessings and uh, a little bit of a nudge and a push will go a long way in supporting our cause. I take a break at this point of time and uh, in the next segment, I'm going to explain to you how uh, you can come forward and support us in taking Waku, the Diaspora Broadcasting Network, a step ahead. NewsX ITV Network have proudly launched the Waku Diaspora Broadcasting Network. Waku DBN will be India's first mainstream platform dedicated to the diaspora community. Help support us, become Waku patrons at memboro.com slash Waku. You will get the first access to our interviews, make recommendations, merchandise access, ask questions and get a shout out of thanks on our TV shows. You can also suggest to us who should get the Waku Golden Chakra Awards and also tell us who should get into the Waku Hall of Fame. Limited memberships are available at 100 rupees per month on Memboro Waku. Sign up now. Log on to memboro.com slash waku.